Hi guys, my name is Olivia. I'm a physiology mentor this semester for you guys. You may have seen me sitting in lecture or you may have even come to one of my sessions or BRCRs. If you haven't already, you should because they're extremely helpful. So I'm just kind of going to go over with you how to study for the first exam, how to study in general, how I studied, um, and then kind of go chapter by chapter some specific topics and kind of general topics as well about what you should be studying or have already been studying. So for chapter one, you should definitely know the primary tissue types. There are four. Um, review the cell organelles and their functions kind of within just a general cell. Um, know the 10 main organ systems. Um, the difference between homeostasis and equilibrium because they're not generally the same thing and they kind of do different things within the body. Um, homeostasis and the pathologies associated with that that kind of go on with inside our body or that can happen, um, whether they be internal versus external. Um, know the compositions of intracellular and extracellular fluid because they don't really have the same things in them um, sometimes. Um, the types of control or regulation that kind of happen within our body. There's um, local and reflex control. There's feed-forward feed positive and negative feedback loops. And then there's the dynamic steady state. And the example Dr. Clark used for that one would be... Um, blood glucose levels before and after your eating and kind of the job of insulin and glucagon that kind of get that process going and then biorhythms. Okay so for chapter two um, we're getting a little more in depth it's kind of um, a general biology and chemistry review if you guys haven't had biology or chemistry in a while I would seriously focus on this chapter because this is kind of the basis um, of a lot of general stuff that we're going to have to know in order for you to get into more specifics about physio. Um, so first we're going to start off, there's biomolecules or macromolecules. Um, the four main types we have are carbs, lipids, proteins, and nucleic acids, and just kind of know the basic building blocks, which are monomers, and then also know the polymers, which is kind of what they build or what they make when they all kind of combine together with their, um, their um, smaller parts, their monomers. Um, and um, this is kind of easier if you make a kind of a chart of each um, macromolecule and you can do the polymers or the monomers, the polymers, and kind of what other important molecules they make up. Um, and it would be good for you to know kind of examples of each kind. Um, so one example that she gives in her outlines is that um, lipids are also steroids. Lipids are actually a, a ring. Um, a ring of lipids is steroids, so that's kind of the line of examples that I'm thinking of. Um, know the differences between DNA and RNA because they kind of do different things in the body. Um, DNA has, um, their nucleotide, nucleotides are A, T, C, and G, and then RNA only uses U, A, G, and C. Um, so that's how we kind of copy and um, translate our DNA, so make sure you know that process. Um, and there's kind of a, she goes into a, more of a, of a chemistry review, which is um, types of bonds, polar and nonpolar molecules are extremely important. And um, that kind of gets into what can go in and out of certain cells uh, based on their polar or nonpolar membranes. Um, for, uh, the terminology for biosolutions, so that would be, um, what does she have in here? Let's see. She has um, the solvent, solute, and the sol solubility hydrophilic, hydrophobic, and amphipathic. Make sure you know what those are in relation to different solutions because um, that will help you figure out kind of osmolarity and molarity later in the chapter. Um, molarity versus osmolarity also is a good one to know. Remember, osmolarity takes into account the dissociation of certain ions, and on the test she's going to tell you which, whether they dissociate or not into in, and into how many. Um, the pH review is make sure you know a definition of an acid, a base, and a buffer. Um, protein functions and how they are regulated is extremely important, so I would just go through that section of the outline and review that pretty well in depth. Alright, so moving on to chapter 3. Um, the main ideas you're kind of going to have to know for this would be body cavities and definitely what is contained in each of them because they obviously don't have the same things. Um, know the difference between an internal and an external lumen. 
Uh, the example that Dr. Clark gives sometimes is um, that your lungs are actually an external lumen because they open up to the outside, whereas your blood vessels would be internal because um, they're totally inside your body and closed off from any outside air or any outside access. Um, the fl fluid compartments, like I mentioned earlier, are really important to know the ratios of kind of what composes them. So extracellular fluid is one-third body fluid, and that's your plasma and your interstitial fluid. And then intracellular fluid is two-thirds of your total body fluid, and that um, kind of helps with exchange between the outside, the inside, and then the inside of your cells. Um, cell membrane structure and func function is extremely important. Um, for exchange of really anything between the cells and kind of what is coming in and out of your body. Um, the functional components, so think like different types of proteins that are in the cell membrane, um, why they're there, why they can help certain things pass through and why certain things cannot. Um, definitely know what these do and why and what they're used for. So the main three types of cell junctions you're going to have to know are gap junctions, tight junctions, and desmosomes. Um, gap junctions are for cell-to-cell -cell communication, tight junctions are they block movement from cell to cell, and then desmosomes are also known as anchoring cells, they anchor one cell to the other. Um, definitely know the types of epithelium and their function within the body and also where you can find them. That can either help you remember their function or um, also what kind of epithelium it is. If you know where to find them in the body, it um, kind of gives you a clue as to what their function may be. Um, and then also definitely know the difference between apical and basolateral membrane. That'll help you with lumens and kind of how cells are exchanging materials within the body. All right, so for chapter four, make sure you kind of know the basics of cell theory. Uh, the first and second law of thermo thermodynamics, one has to do with the quantity of energy and one has to do with the quality of energy. Um, endergonic versus exergonic reactions, where endergonic, it kind of holds in energy, exergonic, it lets it go. Make sure you kind of know how to draw those graphs. That's really helpful in knowing kind of what goes on with those. Um, enzymes as biological catalysts, kind of what the function of an enzyme is within a metabolic process or a biological process. Um, anything that ends in ACE is an enzyme, and anything that ends in OGEN is a non-functional protein or a non-functional enzyme. So... Um, the example Dr. Clark uses is pepsin. Pepsinogen goes to pepsin, and pepsinogen is inactive, and then it gets to the stomach acid to become pepsin. Um, the types of metabolism, um, so anabol anabolism and cat catabolism, um, so the buildup and breakdown. Um, so the cellular respiration, literally all you have to know about cellular respiration is what is already in the outline, so don't go into any more depth than that know where each step happens, the basic kind of chemical formula of it, what happens and what it uses and what it makes. Um, definitely what it makes in terms of ATP, NADH, and FADH, and that's all you need to know for those steps. Um, and then also the steps and what it makes for anaerobic respiration and kind of the purpose of aerobic versus anaerobic respiration. Um, and then some other things you might want to know are the protein synthesis. The main four steps are transcription, translation, protein sorting, and then post-translational modification. So with chapter five, we're kind of getting into more in-depth stuff. So chapter five and six are a little bit longer, but don't worry, you can do it. So for chapter five, we're gonna talk about um, the selectively permeable membrane and kind of what that means to be selectively permeable, that it only lets in certain kinds of things of a certain amount. Um, the difference between osmosis or osmolarity and tonicity. Osmolarity is osmoles per liter and it takes into account the dissociation of certain ions, which Dr. Clark is going to tell you what certain things dissociate into and into how many. Um, and molarity is mole, always moles per liter. Um, the standard osmolarity that you guys are definitely going to need to know, know this number is 300 milliosmoles. Um, and then kind of a little example for hypertonic, isotonic, and hypotonic situations. So Dr. Clark's example for these, for hypertonic, um, we're going to talk about it on our red blood cell in a certain type of solution. So if you put a red blood cell into a 5% NaCl solution, sodium chloride, it's going to crenate, um, which means it's going to shrink or shrivel up. 
Um, for isotonic, if you put it in a physiological saline solution, it's going just to remain the same, so there's no change. And then for hypotonic, if you put a red blood cell into water, um, just plain water, the cell is going to fill up with water and burst. It's going to lyse. So make sure you know those terminologies because she's not going to say burst or shrink. She's going to say crenate or lyse. Um, so then the next kind of topic is going to be tonicity. You only have to take into consideration non-penetrating solutes, whereas osmolarity is non-penetrating and penetrating. So tonicity is only non-penetrating solutes. Um, and the movement across the cell membrane is mainly done so through bulk, something called bulk flow. Um, and this is determined by membrane structure and solute um, properties. So make sure you kind of have an idea about how those change certain things. Um, diffusion is always high concentration to low concentration no matter what. Just make sure you have that in mind when you're answering the questions. Um, flux is diffusion per unit of time. Um, and so make sure you know that net flux is when it's zero, it means that there's movement, equal movement in both directions. It doesn't mean the movement has completely stopped. Um, so for types of channel proteins, there's the ion, open, and gated. For the open channel proteins, um, their weak, weak channels are aquaporins, and these never close. In gated um, channel proteins, there's three types, and they can either open or close based on what kind of channel they are and what environment they're in. Um, carrier proteins with types of transport, there's a difference between symport and antiport. Um, binding site factors are limited um, for their rate of transport depending on how much solute, what kind, and in what concentration it is available. Um, make sure you know facilitated diffusion versus regular diffusion. Um, the types of transport, so like primary and secondary transport are extremely important, um, and then with the secondary active transport. Make sure you know um, the role of glute transporters um, and then also vesicular transport. Um, and then she kind of started to talk about resting membrane potential um, and kind of the charges involved with that, how it's slightly negative. Um, and kind of the two key ions for that are sodium and potassium. So um, sodium moves in um, both kind of both directions depending on what pump it's using. Um, and it follows both its electrical and chemical gradient, whereas potassium only follows one type of gradient. Um, and the ions um, that you're going to need to know, um, and there are certain concentrations, are potassium is high inside, um, and then there's protein concentration, sodium is high outside, and chloride is high outside as well. Okay, so for our last chapter, chapter six, it's all about cell signaling and kind of how that goes through the cell membrane based on what proteins are in there, what kind of proteins, and what kind of molecules are trying to get in and out, um, and kind of what re definitely what receptors are there and which are available. Um, so I would know the differences between hormones versus paracrine and autocrine agents because they all kind of do cell to cell communication but in a different way. Um, and the types of communication are local and long distance, where long distance is using um, your nervous and endocrine systems um, through your hormones and through neurotransmitters. Um, the signal pathways, so just kind of the simple reflex where it um, starts with a stimulus and ends with a response, and just kind of make sure you know the steps all in between. So in addition to that, I would also know um, the types of cell membrane receptors and their pathways for signal transduction. Um, so obviously Dr. Clark showed you that really complicated picture. I would only, obviously, um, she's only going to have you guys know what she has listed in her outline. So if you need more clarification, I know the book has really good pictures of that if you'd like to do that, or just definitely Google pictures if those ones aren't seeming like they're making sense to you. Um, know the difference between cytokines and hormones, where cytokines are made on demand and hormones are stored for later use and they're kind of always available. Um, and a key idea to know is that if you change your receptor, you're going to change the protein, you have to change the protein, which will eventually also change your response and the whole pathway for signal transduction. Um, signal transduction is just kind of a general term we use for when a ligand binds to a protein in the cell membrane and that creates um, a, it 
signals the receptor, which creates a response that goes within the cell and kind of does its activity in there. Um, the different types of receptors and enzymes listed in the outline, that's kind of what all that really in-depth information is, and I would definitely know that stuff. Um, each do something different, and when you change a certain receptor in the membrane, um, or change something that is in the membrane that may be a receptor, it's going to change the whole response. Um, signaling molecules, the main kind of ones she has listed are calcium, gases, and lipids, where calcium is in high concentration in the extracellular fluid. Um, gases like nitric oxide, um, carbon monoxide, and hydrogen sulfide are vasodilators in this situation. Um, then lipids are paracrine agents. Um, her next um, little subject is modulating receptor pathways. So if you, again, if you change the receptor, you change the whole response and you change the entire pathway to get a different response from the same ligand. Um, and then you should know how um, a cell or how a certain body function will terminate a signal pathway once it's reached its completion or whether they don't want it, your body doesn't want it to be happening anymore. Um, and then again, with long distance regulation, you can have simple endocrine simple neural reflex and complex neuroendocrine reflex and I know the book has really good charts for that too. If you're willing to take time to look at those, those will be extremely helpful for you guys too in your study.